Be quiet. Come on. Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation on this Friday morning. Let's give our toast up. <laughs> I love it. Tina, Tina's got a Coke. <laughs> it's past coffee time for me. <laughs> well, mine has water in it, you know, it's just the theme. All right, so what we're going to do today is just kind of go go through and everyone introduce themselves and talk about your business and what you do. Um, how you're handling um, move ins right now or seeing patients in regards to Tina and Rich. Uh, we'll just kind of go from there and treat this uh, just like a BNI, you know, we're here to support each other to empower each other. So after we do our introductions, if you have questions, you know, for um, another one of the members, there is a feature where you can raise your hand or you can just physically raise your hand. I'll see you since it's a small group. Um, so we'll start over with Ryan at the top. Ryan, you make sure you, oh, make sure you say, take yourself off mute, obviously. <laughs> How are you? Your audio is not working, Ryan. So while you try to figure that out, I'm going to move it down to Rich. Rich, we'll start at the bottom with you. Hey, Ryan needs to get his audio on his computer, not just on his Zoom. Oh, there's the birds. <laughs> oh, there's the birds. You hear the birds? Yeah. They call me Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. I'm Rich Ticklo. I'm director of business development with Comfort Keepers. Um, and we are basically a private duty home care agency. We have no minimums. Um, we accept long-term care insurance and we are a member of the Veterans Association. So we love to help out our vets. Um, we have transition programs that a lot of people, um, especially the local hospitals take advantage of where we'll come and pick a patient up at the hospital or at a rehab center or at a surgery center, take them back home and proceed to spend the next four hours with them booking follow-up appointments, cleaning out their fridge, running errands, grocery shopping, doing all those things for just $99. So it's, it's really a good deal. Um, during this time, you know, we are taking all precautions. Uh, we just got a special shipment of PPE equipment in last week, which now allows us to help COVID-19 patients. So we have, we're currently helping the two COVID-19 patients, but we are, uh, we are able to help more. Um, we have reduced our staff at the office and everybody has to do vitals every morning going in and out of the office. We do weekly calls with our caregivers. Um, to make sure that they're doing okay, going over a series of questions to ensure that they're healthy, happy, and okay. But most of all, what I what I am I'm proudest of with our company is the way that we've gone out to support our local community. Um, I think now more than ever, and Amanda, you've done a, a fantastic job of this, is staying connected with all of our community partners. You know, I think that's so important now, and it's, it's important to lift each other up and support each other and be kind and stay positive. Um, so, you know, we're going out and trying to show some kind of gesture, whether it's bringing bagels or food or just writing handwritten thank you letters to all of our community sponsors, uh, community partners, just to let them know that we're thinking about them during this time and that we care. That's fantastic. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. And you guys are doing a great job. Tina, I know you guys are also um, going above and beyond with some curbside things. So tell us about what's happening with you. Sure, we have um, started a few new things within Hoagland Family Hearing. We wanna make sure that everybody's hearing aids are working right now because so many people, if they're hearing impaired, count on being able to see your face or to read your lips. And everybody's running around with masks on. And if people are in the hospital, they may be really, ha really having a tough time understanding what's happening around them. Um, so first of all, within the office, we're offering um, curbside check-in 
when people arrive for an appointment, we're asking them to call us from the parking lot and say, hey, I'm here. If we're ready for them, we'll have them come right on in. But if we're not, we'll have them wait in their car because we don't want people congregating in our waiting room. Um, secondly, we're offering telemedicine appointments. So we are able to have the providers contact the patient as long as they have a smartphone. Um, they can actually have a conversation with their provider and take care of any troubleshooting that way. Um, lastly, we are doing curbside drop off. Okay, um, we're doing we're doing curbside drop off for um, people whether they're our patient or not because, like I said, we don't want anybody trying to deal with hearing aids that don't work right now. So you may have seen John on TV or seen our ads um, in the newspapers, but we are doing free and warranty repairs for any manufacturer brand of hearing aids. Um, if it's something we can fix in the office, if it's as simple as them being clogged with wax, we're taking care of that on site, but we are offering that for anybody, whether or not they are our patient. That's fantastic, Tina. Thank you so much. I, I know um, I've included uh, a little bit of a blurb in my blast that goes out to the seniors and the professionals regarding that. So that's fantastic. Yes, thank, thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you guys for offering that service. All right, Cynthia. Hi. Um, so I'm Cynthia Perthus and I run Senior Care Authority. And my offices are in New York City and Southwest Florida. So they're in Florida from Naples to Sarasota. We do assisted living placement as well as elder care strategy work, which is consulting and, and, and some care management work. We um, have been very busy until really this week with some clients that were a holdover in our pipeline from January, February all of which were scheduled to move the first week of March and it took us six weeks to get them moved in based on the hoops and new policies that we were having to jump through. Um, but one of the things that we've also done is we're pivoting into doing um, more care management work and consulting work and we've offered up one hour free of consulting to potential clients or to just people who wanna call and ask us our thoughts. And I've also been doing a lot of social media work. so. Uh, podcast and webinars and panels. Uh, I have a panel this afternoon that is with a psychologist on how um, how isolation affects the elderly. And one of the reasons I've focused on isolation is that I think that we all are now experiencing what some of our clients experience. So we're home every day and we don't know what day it is and we don't have really good schedules in place, um, some of us. And so we're experiencing that same amount of loss of social contact. And I think that's an important thing to think about, especially since the majority of my business is moving people to assisted living or encouraging them to have home health care workers come into their, into their home. And that isolation is one of those uh, points that we try to make with the family. And then another thing that I'm really focusing on from a social media standpoint is helping clients and the public understand the difference between the different types of living communities. And part of that is because um, it seems like every time we open up a newspaper or turn on the news, we hear some horrific horror story about how many dozens of people have died in a nursing home. But a lot of our clients, in fact, most of our clients that we work with are not people who are in a nursing home. They're people who are in assisted living, independent living, memory care, or they have home health care. And so I think it's important for um, my team and others to take that approach of helping people understand the difference between what they're seeing and reading in a newspaper and what may really be happening in the majority of the communities where we're, where we're servicing. So those are things that, that I'm doing. Um, I am so appreciative to Amanda and, and Senior Blue Book. It's just everything you're putting together, even though you're thinking of them at the la you know, at the, off the top of your head or in the middle of the night, are such excellent, um, really grassroots way of getting getting people together and getting information out. So how did you figure it. out that I, that I do it in the middle of the night, Cynthia? Because I'm doing mine in the middle of the night too. 
Um, you know, one last thing I want to talk about is um, I did a I did a presentation with Amanda on being a survivor of COVID. I had COVID pretty pretty severely, not enough to go to the hospital, but pretty severely in the first couple of weeks of March. And one of the reasons that I wanted to reach out was I wanted to tell a good story. But the other reason was I was looking for volunteer opportunities because I needed to give back. And I couldn't go into assisted living and do volunteer there. So I, um, Amanda connected me with Meals of Hope. And I've been working with Meals of Hope. And in, you know, in Southwest Florida, they're feeding 1,500 uh, people a day. And they've never seen the throngs of crowds that they've needed, uh, that they've seen. And so I just want to encourage people to do what they can do for the food pantries or for, for the food um, insecure that we're now seeing in our community, because it's just, as we all know, you know, food is life. And a lot of us have built our worlds and our social worlds around food and restaurants, and we can't go there now. It's, it's the same people, same thing for people who really need food that, that we want to, we, we need to reach out and try to help those people. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. There's a lot of vulnerable people that are nervous to go outside as well. So making sure that the food's delivered is, is wonderful. All right, Ryan, fingers crossed, my friend, fingers crossed. Hello, everybody. Can I, can I be heard now? Oh, uh, there you good, are. Good, good. Awesome. I'm um, sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, I'm glad to be on this with everyone. This is the first time I've done anything like this, so it's real exciting for me. Um, life at Campo is, is different as it is for everyone else, but we're still excited. So we have moved a few new residents in and um, we're just trying to fo follow all the guidelines and make sure that we, we protect everyone in doing so, but it's excited to watch our family still manage to grow some throughout this. And then for our, our resident engagement, um, we actually have been working, I, I do our social media, so I've tried to put some things on Facebook with our activities director, Lisa, and on Instagram, and we have the unique ability to broadcast through one of our cable channels, and we're working on getting that set up where we're going to have exercise videos and sing-alongs and a lot of different resident engagement um, through the cable channel to keep the community connected even when we can't be, you know, right there in person. So it's, it's been really good and it's, it's kind of a lot of fun and a lot of new experiences, things that will definitely be lasting uh, well after this that will be implemented and, and keep going. So it's, it's been unique. My space bar didn't work that time, Cynthia. <laughs> Ryan, um, tell everyone where you're from and what Campo is, because I'm not sure um, that you've met everyone on this call. I have not. Yes, yeah, so I'm a leasing consultant with Campo Felice, and we're in downtown Fort Myers here right on the Caloosahatchee River, and we're a uh, 55 and older, all-inclusive, independent living community. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. We have a lot of amenities. Um, a, a great atmosphere. We're about a block and a half from downtown Fort Myers, so a lot of our residents are able to get out and walk down there on normal days and, and enjoy everything that downtown Fort Myers brings. So it's lucky and, and awesome to have the location we do. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful there. I think you attract a much younger crowd with your valet parking and um, filet mignon and salmon on the menu for dinner every night that Tara always brags about. Um, the food there is absolutely phenomenal. The views are phenomenal, so it's it's great. Um, I want to open it up for questions uh, for each other. If, uh, if, if you guys are just now getting to know each other, which I think quite a few of you are, you know, kind of new to this group of people. Does anyone have anything? Um, I have a question for Tina. What is your uh, your service area? Well, we have four offices. We are in Bonita Springs, Estero, Fort Myers, and Cape Coral. Um, with this new promotion that we're running, we have people coming from as far away as Arcadia to have their hearing aids serviced because so many providers are not open right now and they maybe can't see who they typically see. So anybody that can get to any one of our four offices, we're happy to help. Perfect. Rich, I know you had your right hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, just really just mention real quickly, um, right now we are supporting one of our local pantries. We're, we're supporting the Jewish Federation. Uh, Jewish Federation provides non-perishable items um, to seniors, especially in uh, Lee and Charlotte counties, uh, regardless of religion or background. 
Um, we have designated Comfort Keeper's office as a hub right now. So you can either do online grocery orders and just have them deliver it to Comfort Keepers, or you can drop by our office where we'll have a box. Um, and we're looking for items such as peanut butter, tuna, beans, fruit, um, tomato sauce, and pasta. Great. Just, just a little something out there for everybody. And Ryan, um, did you talk about the move-in process with you guys at this time and, you know, how you're doing the virtual tours? Uh, I, I didn't, but I can. So, yeah, right now what we're doing is we've got quite a few videos. I personally have shot a virtual tour of all of our floor plans, um, all of our amenities individually. And then we've had a few professional videos that we have um, as well, some Matterports where it's an interactive tour. You can actually click yourself through as well as um, some testimonial videos. So we've been sending those out to everybody, anyone who's interested. And then if we do have someone looking to move in, um, we have the same questionnaire kind of that's, that's pretty standard anytime you're going anywhere just to make sure you know no contact, you're, you're not at risk, you wouldn't be risking us, we wouldn't be risking you. So we have that filled out and um, really try to do a lot or as much as possible um, over the phone. So like I have a move in coming up next week and I've really helped to make sure, you know, get some groceries and snacks. We are still delivering food. So that filet mignon, you can still get every single night. It's just a little different. You're getting it in your apartment right now. Um, but little snacks, things, toiletries that you might not think that are typically easy to run out and get that now might be a little difficult, more difficult. So we're trying to make sure we give a, a heads up on all of that. And then also, um, trying to do the move in, in one day instead of everyone coming back and forth like normal, really to try to schedule it out and get everyone to help with the one day. Um, but it's worked really, really well. Uh, we haven't ran into too many hiccups of any kind, and it's still been a smooth transition for our new residents. Okay, thank you so much. And we lost Amanda. So um, that was Amanda. She's the outside marketing person for the Opal at um, Cape Coral, if you guys weren't familiar with who she is. Um, I don't know if that was a technical difficulty or she had something she had to jump off for, but um, they are a assisted living community right here in the Cape Coral area. And they just went through um, a complete rebrand. It used to be called the Juniper, Juniper Village at Cape Coral. Um, and they've also done a complete remodel uh, so they have a beautiful uh, building that's been completely redone and they're, they are moving residents in um, just as all of you guys have talked about with the, the safe uh, either quarantine or make sure that they are tested before they're socializing. Um, well, if it, does anyone have any other questions for each other? Okay, so this is what we did on the last one. Um, I just ask everybody if they can tell me about their, just to end it on a fun note, tell me about your favorite vacation or fondest memory. And we'll start with you, Ryan. Uh, favorite vacation um, would be my first vacation with my wife. We actually came down to Orlando. I'm from West Virginia. So it was a, a little bit of a trip for us. And we went to Universal Studios, Disney, and then their Halloween Horror Nights Festival, and, and we just had so much fun. It was unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait to do it again once this all opens back up. Yeah, how long have you been here in Florida? I've been down here for just over three years now. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome to uh, now hurricane season. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> I know, I can't. <laughs> Okay, so I told this really moving story about on, on the one for uh, Collier County about my favorite memory being with my grandparents in Arkansas in the Ozarks when I was a small child in the in the cold water. So now I'm going to tell one that's a little bit different um, to give a second uh, for Rich because I don't want to be bored by that first one. But um, after 9-11, um, what I want to encourage everyone to understand. So I, I was um, I worked on Wall Street for 30 years and during that time I traveled all over the world. And I traveled a lot. And there were times when I was traveling 100, 150,000 miles a year. And so I was used to traveling. After 9-11, the travel deals were so amazing that it was almost like they were writing me a check to go on a trip. And I went to Argentina 
and to Buenos Aires and over to Uruguay and then up to uh, Brazil. And I spent two weeks in, in Argent, you know, in that area in South America. And it was just one of my, it was the most fabulous trip. And part of it was because I'm um, as cheap as the day is long. And it just was so reasonably priced. And so I'm already trying to remember though that trip and start trying to dig and figure out where I can go after this disaster um, because the deals are going to be amazing. So that's my travel, you know, my, my travel agency spiel. I love it. I love it. I don't know if you know this, but Felicia that was on the previous call um, does that on the side uh, travel. Oh, I didn't know that. She loves to travel. You guys should hook up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Tina, take it away, my love. Well, my husband and I are cruisers, not right now, but typically we love any cruise. Um, probably my favorite cruise to date has been the Southern Caribbean. Um, I just love the islands down in that area. And like Cynthia, I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for those deals that are coming up because we're hoping, we had a few things planned for this spring and summer um, that have obviously been canceled. So I'm looking to see what I can get on the calendar to look forward to. Yeah, call Felicia down at the Arlington. She'll help you out. All right, Rich. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up. I went favorite vacation last time, so this time I'm gonna go with fondest memory. So I would say like my fondest memories of growing up um, was my father taking us to baseball games. Like we love taking us to New York Yankee games. Um, I'm from New York originally, lived there for 27 years. Um, and uh yeah woo -woo, new york um but he got we got we went to so many games and my father had really good seats through his company that he was working with one of the games that we were at we were sitting right behind us was the uh pr guy for the yankees and my father and him got to talking one day and after that they they began to a, a great friendship and that friendship was great for us because we got to do all these cool things with the Yankees and I got to actually be an honorary bat boy for one game. I had my name up in the scoreboard and everything like that. And, and I got to wait, I got to walk out in the field and wave to everybody. And it was like the biggest thrill ever. Are there pictures of that? I have to ask my dad if he's still, if he's got pictures of that, I would love, I'm I sure he pictures. does. I want to see pictures. That's pretty oh. cool. Yeah, so that was that was a cool memory for me. I love it. Well, uh, it's been an honor to sit and talk with you guys today. Um, you know, I'm doing this so we can just stay connected and and be together during during this and encourage each other. And if there's anything that Seniors Blue Book can do for you, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and we need to schedule some one on one time, Tina, with John to do a, an SVB live and. Rit Ryan, sure. send me all of your videos. Um, that's we're posting those on our um, social media platforms as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys all so much for taking the time to spend your morning with me um, slash afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for again for putting it together. Thank you, Amanda. Absolutely. Have a great, great day. Happy Friday. Uh -huh. You too. You bye too. bye.